And now, ladies and gentlemen, you're about to enter a gun-filled zone. Don't let yourself be triggered by the sound of Fool Auto News about guns for gun supporters. Yeah! So yeah, what are you we talking? You got, I, I sent you the links, right? So you got the stories to look at there. We're talking about the, the new Russian cartridge and rifle. This is the nine by nine point six. Oh, let's get technical here. It's not a rifle. It's a shotgun. That's right. It's a uh -oh. shotgun. It's a sort shotgun. Of. Sort of. Sort of a shotgun. It's the nine point six by fifty three millimeter Lancaster. Say what? You, what? what? Did, you, did you did you research this at all? And you got some got some stuff for me. I got stuff for you. Do you got stuff for me? Who who wants to start with their stuff? Well, first of all, what's a Lancaster? That's the big question. Well, that refers to the shape of the barrel, which Correct. is oval-shaped. Which, as the oval spins through the barrel, it, it creates the rifling, or it creates the spin in the projectile. Yes, it's, it's an oval-shaped barrel, and it's got grooves built into it, and... If you go to iState.tv, you'll see the front of the site. Actually, if you go to iState.tv slash I010, you get the show notes. And on there, there is a video. And it shows uh, a, a little camera going through the barrel. Oh, that's this. the other one. That's not the Lancaster. Oh, that's that's true. the that's other right. one. That's the 366 TKM, which we're not even going to yes. talk about. Or well, yeah, maybe we will. I don't know. Because they, they, so, they... Go ahead. So this Lancaster barrel, it has no lands and grooves as rifling. It's the actual elliptical shape spinning through the barrel that causes the projectile to spin. So because there's no lands and grooves, there's no traditional rifling, it's considered a shotgun in, rif in uh, Russia. So do you want to get into the background of some of the Russian gun laws and why they came up with this. Yeah, you, you want to go there first? We can do that. I think, yeah, so in Russia at the age of 18, you're allowed to own a shotgun, but you're not allowed to own a rifle until five years later. So to bypass this, these tricky Russian gun makers have come up with a couple of very interesting novel solutions to get around the laws god bless them god bless um, everyone so these two new cartridges are considered slugs they're considered sh shotgun slugs well, the important thing is it's considered a smoothbore barrel that's the important designation here correct so for the lancaster you're they're shoot you're shooting essentially something a little bigger than a 35 wheeland um within 300 yards so for hunting it's pretty good i mean you're not going to go hunting mountain goats with this thing but if you want to get into rifle distances yeah if you want to get into rifle type guns um there's there's no limitation and the other thing is this thing the parent case is the 762 by 54R. So you can shoot that out of Kalishnikovs. So now you can shoot shotguns out of Kalishnikovs that perform like rifles. So Wait a second. Are are you yes. saying I I thought that the the cartridges themselves were also So it's not the cart it's just the Oh, never mind. So it's just the bullet that's oval shaped. Okay, that makes more sense. No, yeah. the bullet is a traditional bullet. It's it's a round. There's nothing different about the bullet. The it's chamber is perfectly. I'm looking at it. It's got grooves in it. You're looking at the TK whatever. Oh. Okay. Yeah. The, I've done some homework on this. Okay, good. I this was is, counting on you to do that. This is very clever. So you can have a repeating slug gun 
that shoots out to 300 yards rather well, kind of like a shotgun, like you would shoot a 35 Wheeland or a, a 9.3 by 62. It's up in that category. Um, so there, there aren't a lot of critters in Russia that could walk away from a cartridge like that. Um, and it gives people who don't want to wait five years the ability to go hunting with a semi-automatic rifle, essentially. But because the, the bore is completely smooth of lands and grooves of any kind, it's still considered a shotgun. And then the other one, the three point, I'm sorry, the 9.3 by, what is it? No, that's the, the, the 366 TKM. TKM. Oh, that's nine. Yeah, yeah, it's three point. Well, that parent. Yeah, the three six six. Yeah, the parent cartridge okay, for yeah. that is the is the AK forty seven round that's been necked up to the venerable uh, nine point three, and the nine point three by sixty two has been a standard of big game hunting all over the world for almost a hundred years or better actually. So to put that on the AK forty seven round is almost comparable to the 338 federal which okay. i'm a big fan of so you're talking about a very large bullet um in close quarters that's that's got some serious stopping power and again the way that they got around the the rifle restrictions is by only rifling the end of the barrel so um, there are shotguns that have the ends of the barrels rifled, whether you have a, a choke system on the shotgun or you have some shotguns that actually have uh, choke, not chokes, um, rifling on the end of the barrel. Uh, the most part of the barrel is smooth bore, so it's in Russia, it's technically a shotgun. So they've created these quote unquote shotguns that shoot rifle cartridges pretty damn well. Right. Yeah. And it's, it's a workaround. You know? It is. It's, it's like what's going on in California with the companies that are trying to figure out workarounds so people they can so they can hold on to their ARs and get some reasonable uh capacity out of them it's the gun manufacturers are gonna find a way to i, I guess they can't they can't conquer all loopholes but <laughs> well i've seen california and new jersey several states that have uh on ar type rifles they have to have a fixed magazine um and i've seen these devices that are like stripper clips that load a fixed 10 round and 20 round magazine uh, very fast uh, and they are the marketplace will find a way around the laws it always does and they're very effective it's interesting there are some parts of this country in the United States that actually has stricter gun laws than Russia does so yeah and about a year year and a half ago I was reading how Russia is now allowing people to conceal carry. Now, you can only conceal carry with um, revolvers, and it's still hard to get. But the fact is, they are they're, allowing they're, it. They're heading more and more towards less and less restrictions. They're, Correct. they're moving in, in, I don't want to say the opposite direction of the U.S., because actually, the U.S. is... It, there is no direction the U.S. is moving. It's moving in multiple directions at once, depending on on where you're at. I know in Nebraska, for instance, I just I just talked about this on uh, headlines you may have missed, which 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 comes on every day at 12:30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on the I on the I State TV Facebook page. Uh, Nebraska, they're trying to pass a law that would prevent local well localities from restricting uh gun use and it's the police union that are 
they're concerned. It's the Omaha Police Union, I believe, that is concerned about ending an Omaha regulation that assures that uh, people who are prohibited from getting guns don't get guns. I don't know what they mean by prohibited people, I think is what they use. So, you, I mean, and then you look at what's going on in California, so it's it's kind of schizophrenic. It's one in, in a lot of ways it's moving more towards gun control. In a, in a lot of ways, I'm happy to say, a lot of other places are moving towards towards less gun control. And I saw a video recently of J.P. Sears. You know, he does those those parody inspiration videos. And I, I saw he did uh, one on gun control, in which he was pretending to be for guns, and he was, he was being a total idiot troll. And it's like, you know, these guns are invent are 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 designed to kill people. So therefore, if we have more guns, less people will die. And I'm like, okay, that's it. I'm done with J.P. Sears. I have no time. I have no quarter, no patience, no understanding for gun grabbers. They're like, they're subhuman to me. I don't even, I won't even have a conversation with them anymore. I don't know how you feel. Did I just, um, did I just break your J.P. Sears all? Yeah, I don't know who that is, and I really don't care. You don't want so, it now. Yeah. Now you don't want it. So, to. yeah, I think the, the country in general is moving more towards uh, greater freedoms for gun owners. The United States, that is. Um, in general, yes. Generally speaking, yeah. Thank God. Um, but I want to get back to this cartridge because I have not found any – real numbers for these cartridges like what kind of pressures are they to wait some more what's the velocity yeah. and all well, that and you, the, the strange thing is that i came across this cartridge on an auto feed uh on youtube and i'm like no they, they got this wrong it's not a 9.6 they're talking about the 9.3 by 62 the old german cartridge that helped you know take down large game in northern Europe and Africa. I'm like, no, they got their numbers wrong. And I started watching the video. I'm like, wait a minute. That's coming out of Kalashnikov. How are they shooting rifles uh, with multiple rounds in Russia? I thought these were restricted firearms in Russia. And so I started looking at it. And I was oh, like, right. holy that, shit. That's, that's what you're referring to, the video of the dudes firing in the woods? Yeah, I'm like, what right. is this? And so... I, I Googled it and came across an article, but I have not found like velocities. I have not found traje trajectories. I have not found, you know, how many grains are the bullets. I have not found, and maybe stuff is out there that and I just plain out missed it. Um, but it seems like the gun enthusiasts in Russia are delighted with this thing. But like, what's the muzzle energy? Um, yeah, does it, I didn't find anything. On that my either. guess is it's going to shoot like a forty-five seventy. That's that's my guess, and um, which is like, hey, a forty-five seventy out of a semi-automatic uh, ten-round box magazine. That's some serious shit. Um, that's that you're going. Remember we did that show about what's the proper cartridge for Bigfoot. Oh, That's right. The yes, this would be a Bigfoot big foot. cartridge. <laughs> yeah. Right. Oh, man. It's a, it's It's got to be a thumper, a serious thumper. So I, I want to see what the what the specs on this thing really are. Um, and I'm delighted to see that the Russians are are in the game and they're, they're starting to think outside the box. And maybe we'll see additional the, stuff. The, 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 the Vepper is, is a quite innovative uh, gun manufacturing company. I love man, I, lo I love what Vepper does, man. Yeah, but it's not really changing. Like, it's not like Keltec, which, you know, disassembled. Oh, well, yeah, it's not. Keltec, sometimes it's way right. out there. But you well, know what? That's cool. I like go way out there. Test the balance. What I'm looking for. Uh, Vepper deconstructs the firearm and then puts it back together and say, how can we make it work like this? There's some real 
engineering and design going on. And I'm Caltech sorry. And Caltech is like, Cal hold on, man. Dude, dude, throw some stuff out there. Let's see what it looks like. Oh, that's what I meant about <laughs> Caltech, not Vepper. Yeah, I apologize. Right. Yeah. So, yeah, Caltech, t Caltech's not operating on a blueprint. So, <laughs> when, they, when they first came out with the stealth fighter, which is really a bomber, the design parameters were, hey, we got to make a shape that's stealthy. And then, hey, we got to make it fly. So they deconstructed the airplane and then put it back together with the primary – what? Hello? Keep going. With the primary no, nothing, function – Nothing, you didn't do anything. With the primary function, not flight, but stealth. So when you look at companies like Caltech, they're thinking of the firearm, but they're not thinking of, let's say, ergonomics or shootability. They're taking it apart and saying – Okay, we have this objective we have to hit. Let's see if we can hit this objective. Now how do we make it comfortable and shootable and accurate and all these other things? So if we can see that kind of design thinking coming out of Russia and reconstructing, repurposing, deconstructing firearms and putting them back together like a lot of the innovative companies are doing out of Israel, out of the United States and Europe, yeah, Russia, go Russia. I can't wait to see what you guys create. I'm excited. Oh yeah, yeah, and I don't, I don't know how soon it'll be before we see that. You ain't on our shore. You're not because there's there's this boycott of the Russian guns well, and yeah, gear. Yeah, no, that's why I said I don't know how long because 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 maybe it's going to be a very long won't time. Last forever, unless maybe they license. Unless they license that to an American company to produce it here. Like there's there's American made uh, Kalashnikovs now that are pretty damn good. Now imagine if somebody chambered one of those puppies in a uh, what's it nine point six by what by fifty three? Yes. Wow. Well, yeah, that would so that would that, that would that would be good. I mean, if you just went. Ah, ah, ah. You know, like one of those guns went, ah, 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 I don't know how practical it is, but I mean, for home defense, it's going to, it's going to blow well, if, more than dime size holes in people. Dude. Well, <laughs> if Plains Bison were to be invading your home, you're set. That, yeah, that's the round to have. <laughs> you're set, dude. Yo, man, I'm planning for when the Plains Bison rise up and they will. I know they will. So on that and note. If and if you're in Alaska and you got a grizzly problem, semi-auto shooting uh, a yeah, nine point six. It looks like a it looks like a heavy, bulky gun. I don't know if I necessarily want to be slogging that into the woods of Alaska. No, I want to be. Know, man. I want to be pointing that outside my window. That's great, but slogging it into the wilderness? I don't know about that. Unless I was going hunting, but I mean, if I was just going out in the wilderness and doing my thing, I don't know, man. I don't know. It looked pretty big, Alrighty. bulky gun. So Next time, by the way, the, the, yeah. the next round of shows coming up next week, I'm going to have stuff planned. I'm going to have scenes created. I use OBS and you create different scenes, so I need to create scenes to show the website, to show pictures, to show videos. I'll get all that got done. So next week we'll be able to do that stuff. Not Is that why week. you're making funny faces? No, I was making a funny face because I saw this giant green screen suddenly on the on the live stream. So I had to refresh oh. and make sure. Was that my end or is that like, is that something that's oh. happening? But fortunately, it, 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 it looks clear now. So. But if it was an issue, we would be shutting down the live stream. We would just continue because we're still recording. I'm recording right now uh, as well, so no problem. So we're going to go to our next segment after the break. We're going to have a one-minute break. It's just a one-minute break. And when we get back, oh, boy, do we have some talking to do. I'll, t I'll put it to you this way. There is a chance, I will say. I'd say about a 60% chance that we don't get to iPrepper tonight because we're going to be talking iWorld and we're going to be talking about 
the emerging line in the Middle East, Russia versus the U.S. and all the all the machinations involved with that. Ew. You're looking forward to that, right? Yeah. Yeah, you got stuff to say. He got stuff to say. So well, we'll... I, it's stuff that I've said before, but I think it's starting to coalesce. You and I have well, had this conversation yeah, yeah, for quite okay, some time. Okay. Sir, sir, we're about ready to go on a break. Save it for the other side of the break. And uh, we're going to be talking we're going to be talking alliances and machinations stuff. and stuff after stuff. the break. If you want to think outside the box, sometimes you have to wear outside the box. All of your outside the box threads can be found at agora.threadless.com. Go to agora.threadless.com and find the right outside the box threads to fit your outside the box head. That's agora.threadless.com. Go to the Agora unless, of course. You are listening to iState.tv's Is Daily, where we expose the reality of power around you and the opportunity to change that reality to favor individuals and free associations. If you like this podcast, please be sure to go to pay.iState.tv and sign up to be a monthly iStater. And now let's get back to the show. You are listening to Is Daily Monday with Professor Rambo and Paul Gordon, featuring Full Auto, iWorld, and iPrepper. And now, here are your hosts, Professor Rambo and Paul Gordon. We're back on the other side of the break. Nice. And make sure that you go to agora.threadless.com oh. and get yourself a, some Bodhi gears. And why are you, the purse. Why are you appropriating my culture? Agora? Yeah. Agora. I, I'm not. I'm not appropriating your culture. That's Bodhi Agora. Ooh. Bodhi Agora. And you is guys are talking about. Atlas the other night on one of your other shows. Atlas, really appropriating my stuff. Atlas, what are you talking about? You're saying holding the world over his head for eternity. I was talking about Sisyphus, not Atlas. Oh, Sisyphus. Okay, even better. <laughs> How is that even better? I don't. I You're don't still care. appropriating. You're is still that, appropriating. Is that more deeply the Greek OP. than Atlas? The OP. Is? You're you're appropriating the OP. Well, uh, yeah, I'm. I am the OP though. So. I can't be appropriating well, the OP. 10%. You're 10%. No, 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 no. No, I am OP. You're like some dirty, muddied version that some perverted, lesser. Original. You may have some OP in you, but not, not, not enough to be qualified as official OP. Not much. Do you have, I mean. Do you have space be behind your teeth? Like your wisdom teeth? Um, Yeah. Why? No, you don't. You had them pulled out, didn't you? No, no, I have, I have, I have all my wisdom teeth. You do? I, I have none of them. None of them have been pulled out. And do you have space behind your wisdom teeth? Like, like you could fit another tooth back there? No, no, no. But See, I do you're have not space, OP. but not that much. See, Neanderthals have more space in their mouth than regular. Homo sapiens. You don't know so, anything about my people. Don't be talking about my people. You don't know my people. I know Let's your people the... better than you. You know your people. I know, I know my people better than you know my people because I am my people. So I know my people better than I, you know my people. So your four percent. That four percent is the key percent. That is the. Is that, like, that is... is that like the three percenters? You're like a four percenter. <laughs> That's the salient point of Paul. That four percent—that's the salient point of Paul. So that's all that matters. Okay. So we're going to get into this now. Are you ready? Are well, you we're ready? going to that part of the world, the Mediterranean, uh, yeah, and we, the Middle East. So this is—I don't know what how how much you folks are paying attention to what's going on in the Middle East. And really, it's the Middle East. It's the Levant. It's the Eastern Mediterranean, and then. It extends outward, but on one side, the way that I see it, the one side you pro prominent, well, predominantly have what's forming up to be a U.S.-led alliance, and on the other have, on, on the other side, you have what's 
looking to be a Russian-led alliance, and the lines are being drawn, and the lesser players are being drawn into two competing camps. And so, so what I did, I did is, uh, and I sent it to you. So there's a, there's a few stories here that I'm just going to go over really briefly, and can I'm going to open it up for. Yes. Can I say something before we get to the really briefly thing? Yeah, sure. Go to, take a get a map of the world and take a ruler and find the center of India. And from the center of India, find the center of Morocco and draw a line from the center of India to the center of Morocco. And from that line, Imagine that you have fingers radiating out, and that is where – how do you put this? I'm that is going to be a very important access to follow um, for the next ooh, 50 to 100 years in terms of geopolitics and geostrategic positioning uh, for the United States, Russia, China – and all of the countries that Europe and all of the countries that come into contact with that, with that azimuth, if you will. Azimuth. Azimuth. Okay. So, okay, you may proceed on your part. All right, thank you. So I'm gonna, I'm well. not gonna give you the details of these things. These are just quick little blips, and then we're gonna get into a general conversation about what's going on. So from Newsweek, we have the story of the French president, Emmanuel Macron, who is accusing the U.S., Israel, and Saudi Arabia of instigating a war uh, in the Middle East. Then you have, uh, from Keep Talking Greece, you have an announcement that the State Department has made a determination approving a possible foreign military sale to the government of Greece for an upgrade of F F-16 aircraft to an F-16 Block 5 configuration, which is a considerably more sophisticated config configuration that the Greeks, for the longest time, were not given access to. Suddenly, that's opening up. From the New York Times, leaders of Russia, Turkey, and Iran announced an agreement on, on Wednesday, this is actually in November, to sponsor a conference aimed at achieving a peaceful settlement of the Syria war. So you see those three. The, from Cyprus Mail, Cyprus shifts to the U.S. President of the Republic of Cyprus, Nikos Anastasiades, will be in Saudi Arabia. Well, he was in Saudi Arabia January 2nd, and he paid the first ever visit by a Cypriot president to the country of Saudi Arabia. From the Corbett Report, uh, reports have come out claiming that the United States and Israel have signed a secret deal to tackle the nuclear threat from Iran. So it looks like the deal isn't so secret anymore. The far-reaching memorandum of understanding was signed on December 12th at the Light White House following intense talks, whatever. And then shortly after that was signed, then you started to see protests emerging in Iran. And uh, from your morning news from is well, okay. And then Turkey's power play. In Sudan, in the last week of December, Turkish President Recap Tayyip Erdogan announced that his host country had agreed to transfer the island of Suakin in the Red Sea of, to Turkey to rebuild and administer for an undefined period of time. And those are just some of the stories, but I just thought I'd just... that That's a good conversation starter, wouldn't you say? And go, because you got thoughts. Where would... Where would you like to start? Let's start with, uh, I'd like to start with Turkey and Sudan and that island. That That's island a was a, yeah, that island was a, an outpost of the Ottoman Empire that helped control the pilgrims to the their holy sites. And there are monuments on that island, Ottoman monuments and mosques and architecture that is horribly neglected and the Turks want to go in and rebuild and refurbish these sites. Um, and they also, by the way, want to put a naval base there, a military naval base. So if you look at that location, 
that is a total and utter big F U to Saudi Arabia and Egypt. Egypt seems to be playing ball with Israel. So does, so does Saudi Arabia. And Turkey seems to be realigning itself with Iran. It has been actually for quite some time. It's just becoming public now with the trial in New York City of those uh, Turkish bankers who were and, and doing partly, all sorts of shenanigans. And, yeah, partly Turkey's playing a little dance. It's not fully out of the European club. It's still trying to find a way to kind of have one foot still there and one foot in Russia. <laughs> and, you know, we just happened recently where Turkey recently purchased uh, anti, what, what are they, what was the exact military system, uh, missile system purchased oh, from Russia? The S 400s, which are not compatible you're, with you're, any you're of the NATO. Up there, buddy. Can you hear me now? now? Yes. You're breaking up for a second. We're okay cool. now. Uh, they were. They have committed to purchase the S four hundreds from the Russians, which are a very sophisticated anti aircraft system. Um, it's short. It has several different kinds of missiles that it can launch, and it can lock onto eighty targets at one time. So they're. They're seeing, look, since the breakup of the Ottoman Empire and before, the Turks have had patrons, um, whether the patrons were Arabs or the Germans or NATO in the United States, they've kind of like uh, attached themselves to a world power and had that world power help them guide their empire through um military and economic challenges. They have gotten to the point where they feel that they don't need that anymore. And they are going it alone for the first time in over a hundred years. And they're looking to form alliances. They're not. they're not and they are. Uh, they're playing both sides of it, which is typical for uh, Not a fan of Turkey, I'm taking it. We'll just move on. Anyway, yeah, because we got a yeah, lot it's of a, and cover it's a complex on. relationship with the Turks. Um, but um, there's just so much developing in that part of the world. Um, Egypt. Um, Egypt is finding oil in the Mediterranean now, like Greece and Cyprus and Israel. Uh, the fact that the Cypriot leader went to Saudi Arabia and the Saudi Arabian prince is going to Israel, and the Israelis just handed over a sophisticated little uh, attack um, attack boat to the Cypriots. It's the most sophisticated warship they have, and they're gonna receive three more of those from the Israelis. Um, there's a lot happening. The fact that Cyprus is now integrated into the European defense system and for the first time since Cyprus was invaded by the Turks, they are now allowed to buy weapon systems from the European Union. They weren't before. There were there were um, embargoes on the Cypriots buying war systems from from the West. That's been lifted. Not only are they buying weapon systems from the West now, but they're buying them from Israel uh, and the United States. So. The fact that the United States now has said, oh, Greece should have this upgrade to its F-16s. 123 F-16s are going to be upgraded to the uh, the Viper configuration. Let's just say the kick butt version. Let's yeah, well, say that. They, these, these have a digital radar in them that helps you identify stealth planes. How's that? That's, that's, that's good. That's yeah. Good. So That's they're going to have a significant upgrade, folks. Correct. So, and then the United States is pulling out of Pakistan, and instead seems to be favoring India. And now there's rumors that India might be looking to purchase the exact same F-16s that the Greeks are buying. Whoa! Yep. Now the, Whoa. And, then in the Pakistan, and in the Pakistani front, you had 
Trump said, no more foreign aid. So Pakistan said, hey, China. Screw Correct. you, America. Hey, China. And now America has responded to that, and they've suspended their security cooperation with Pakistan, whatever that means. Well, and well, they should because the Pakistanis were playing both sides of the well, <laughs> on what, both sides, not what, just what both sides. What they sides, should but... or shouldn't, what they should or shouldn't, what it, what it, to me, what it is showing is, is that the lines are being more and more clearly defined, and and the powers, the great powers such as they are, United States, Russia, and China, they're kind of looking around and saying, "All right, all right." Who's with me? Let's 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 figure it us out. Let's draw the lines in the sand. Let's figure out who's with who. That's I tell you. If they if they ever get to a point where it starts to look like it's settled, I'm a, I'd be a little nervous at that point. Well, you should be getting nervous now because it oh, is yeah. settling, and the axis it's is settling. pretty clear. Yeah, it's, it's settling, pretty clear. But there are still some players out there that are still like, eh, I don't know. And, and Europe, even Europe, Europe is a, an unsettled mess. To a degree, Europe is looking and saying China is our future in a lot of ways. And they're not liking right now the direction that the United States is going. But at the same hand, they're like, they, they, they can't be fully pulled into the China orbit. So right now, the EU, Europe, is, is kind of up for grabs, I think. Well. The Europeans didn't like Reagan either. They hated Reagan. Yeah, they but, thought he was but, a buffoon. But, but, but Reagan, Reagan was still protecting them, big time. Yeah, but what? And the United States is still not protecting them. Come on. But Reagan was the facilitator of bringing down the wall and reuniting Germany. Um, so the Europeans have this smug kind of attitude that. The Americans are simpletons, and it... you're talking possibly about Oprah running against Trump in 2020 in Oprah Oprah Trump race in 2020. Anyway, go ahead. I'll just yeah. put that out there. <laughs> but but there's something to be said about simplicity that um, bears more fruit than complexity. Um, and so the Europeans may be more sophisticated, but, but they also get stuck in the mud because of their sophistication. And they develop a lot of nice things, but the United States seems to be out innovating them even at this point. And Trump is a reflection of that. Whether you like him or not, uh, he is a reflection of that. And trust me, if the if the Russians start marching through Europe, uh, America and NATO will um, will call in it, their obligations to Europe, and they will react. I mean, there's no doubt about that. It's just the Europeans, being the sissies that they are, are like, oh, oh my God, this Trump, he's got a big mouth and he says scary things. Oh my God, no. <laughs> He's scary. I mean, I mean, Trump you can't just say says, things like that. J Trump just says openly what they say behind closed doors. That's the thing. All these people with their 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 outrage at. I mean, there's a lot of things that if you want to argue policy, that's one thing. And there's there's policies I definitely don't agree with. Of course, I come at it from a perspective of someone who fundamentally rejects the whole course of enterprise model. Be that as it may. But but the criticism, the, the, the rage against Trump is, is that he says awful things and he says really blunt things and he tweets really scary things. And, and like you, you do realize what these people are saying behind closed doors to one another, on the phone to one another. They, they're, they're, there's some expletives being expressed. There's what they're saying in private to one another, what world leaders are saying to each other over the phone. It ain't pretty. It ain't nothing compared to what you're hearing from Donald Trump. And you're you're upset because Donald Trump, uh, he talks a little bit more closer to how they sound and talk behind closed doors. It's, it's nuts. The, the guy is not mentally unstable. He's, 
he actually, from from what I hear from folks, I think uh, Geraldo Rivera came out recently and said, "This is this is who this guy's been like the whole time." I have no idea what you're talking about, and and the folks that elected him, this is who they knew he was, and they elected him because of it. They voted for this guy because there was finally somebody that didn't sound prim and proper. Meanwhile, behind closed doors, they're, you know, drowning babies. <laughs> Donald will drown babies in the open. Okay, I'm just kidding. But yes, metaphorically, Donald will drown the babies in the open, whereas everybody else will drown the babies behind closed doors, and then act totally outraged when somebody else does it. And yes, this is a metaphor. I'm not saying anybody is literally drowning babies. But it was a shocking metaphor, so I went for it. But I, I the United States of America is not Donald Trump. It's, also, it's, it's the bureaucracy. That thing's going to be here after Donald is gone. Correct. And, and that's... And it's that's what the world is looking at. They're looking at the bureaucracy behind Donald. And, and where's that going? Where's that trend? And I think in that front, there's, I mean, you know, so I, I, you, you sent me an article recently and, and the guy wanted to show us proof that everyone voted against America over the Jerusalem thing as a proof that somehow America had no allies. That's, that's hockey pocky. That's that's a show vote that means nothing. Absolutely means nothing. A lot of these you think that that Great Britain when push comes to shove is not going to run with America? They don't have any choice. They have to. How about They're Australia? Like, what's that? How about Australia? I don't know about Australia. Australia's... How about J Japan? Oh, Japan with the US definitely. No, no, How about no, South no. Korea. Yeah, no, no. Oh my gosh, South Korea out the wazoo, totally. Taiwan, not even a question. Again, not even a question. There's right. so many nations there out there. However, they voted in the UN. Um, United States of America is a crucial lifeline for them. They're not going Is anywhere. How about Israel? Absolutely, another one. S Saudi Arabia. Well, right now, I, I don't think Saudi Arabia needs the United States. But now they do because they've cast they've 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 made the decision, so yeah, right now they do. I don't know how how much uh, Russia and or well actually never mind. I think Russia or China would welcome them in a heartbeat. So I don't think Saudi Arabia. I think Saudi Arabia has a lot more negotiating than say Israel does. Canada but still, what's that? Canada? Yeah, Canada, even with Justin Trudeau. Canada's not going anywhere. Canada's going to run with the United States. Look. They're too vital. Look. Even Mexico, when push comes to shove, Mexico will run with the United States. Everyone loves a winner. And as the American economy starts to come back from this hiatus that it's been put into by the leftists here in the United States, um... And as Trump starts to look more and more like a winner, and he is, if he's he starting to, if, yeah. Um, he's going to need a more. lot of really big economic wins to overcome the deluge of, of, of hit pieces on day and night and day and night. I mean, it is a, it is a relentless concerted campaign. I think and, his base is motivated by those hit pieces his base his, is but there's his, a whole there's a whole part of the country and I'm, and I'm not talking about the the resist people i think they're obviously no matter what they're going to be i'm talking about all the squishies all the yeah. squishies out there those when trump are being deluged and and yeah mainstream media still has an effect on America. It's not nearly as powerful as it was, but it's still pretty powerful. And they, it's not just news media. They have the culture. They have the colleges. They totally dominate all the major cultural centers. They, they dominate everything, but, but they're, they're not going to be able to dominate one thing. And this is what Reagan said. And when the when his four years are over, 
and he's going to go for re-election. He he's going to do he's going to play the Reagan card and say, "Are you better off now or four years ago?" Yeah, I, and people I, I, and people are going to people are going to look at the results and say, "Yeah, I have a better job. I drive a nicer car. I live in a better home. Um, my kids are better off. I'm not worried about the future as much as I used to be. I don't feel like I'm going bankrupt. I don't feel like." I'm depressed. I don't feel like, yeah, we're going on vacation. I think things are good. Yeah, this Trump guy, he's a wackadoodle for sure. But he's making a better president than the than the ones who were presidential. And on that note, why don't we go to our last break and we'll come back. We'll just do a, a short segment on iPrepper. What do you say? Dude. We didn't even get into the nitty gritty of the last section. We kind of get distracted. I, I know. I, it's 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 such a vast topic, though. It's maybe maybe we'll continue the i the the Middle East conversation next week. We we'll get a little bit more details. Well, let me give you something to think about. Okay. What is going on in Iran when their president what? when their president gives a speech in Parliament? about how everything in Iran is screwed up and the ultra conservatives start attacking the guy and everyone else is taking to the streets that, I mean, that happened December 10th and this has been like fuming now. So Iran, it looks like Russia is turning Turkey. Not that they're turning Turkey, like they're becoming scaredy cats. They're turning the country of Turkey. I don't. So, I, I I don't think Russia's turning Turk. Well, I guess they are in the sense that Russia's like, dude, mm. we'll give you more stuff. Yeah, I wonder if Israel, the United States, and Saudi Arabia are trying to turn Iran. I I I have little doubt that they would be. Of course, of course they would be. If you see an opportunity, you're going to take it. Every any nation that has any power to affect another nation to change its regime towards its will do that almost almost any nation will do that so of course i i don't i don't have little doubt that they're doing that i look at what's going on with the iran protest and and okay this is how i read it i strongly suspect okay it started off the protest started off like you said these were the ultra conservatives were actually reacting in a totally opposite way from what you're seeing now and then, so there was a little bit of protest, and then all of a sudden, different groups started showing up. And I believe that different group, that a lot of it had to do with the CIA, with Israel, with the Saudis doing whatever they're doing over there. But then there's a whole group of people that it doesn't really matter. Even if they knew that Israel and Saudi Arabia and uh, the CIA were the ones that were orchestrating it, they, they still wouldn't care. They're not CIA operatives. They're not Israel operatives. They're not American operatives. But they're sick of living under a theocracy. So there's that huge group of people. But I'm, I don't know that they're not going to exchange. I, I, I'm a little nervous about what's going on in Iran because one of the dangers is actually what you could see is if you think this regime is extreme, Wait do you see what might replace it. But the question is, are you going to see Egypt or are you going to see Libya? In Egypt, they they went more moderate. They went more secular. In Libya, not so good. So I'm a little nervous about what you're going to see there. And if you see like a lot of uh, unrest, China has China has people in Iran. They have business interests in Iran. They have a, I'll put this in air quotes, legitimate reason to intervene to secure their their people, their property, their well, not, well, yeah, their property, their business interests. Same thing for Russia. So, <laughs> I could see China and Russia moving in their troops to make sure this thing is stabilized and and let's not forget stabilized in their favor. And let's not forget, there's this sizable population of Kurds in Iran. Who are also looking for their own country, straddling Iran, Iran, uh, Iraq, Iraq, and Syria. 
and Turkey. Right. Oh, in Turkey, right. Don't forget that, right. And a little bit right. in Armenia. Yeah, so, so there's there's that wrinkle. Although the the, the Kurds, other than the, the Syrian Kurds, are they're 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 finding themselves in decent shape for right now. It looks like there was a there was a bit of a threat where it looked like Iraq was going to insist on taking possession of the border between Iraq and Syria, but apparently the Kurdish Syrians and the Iraqis have worked out a deal so that the Kurdish Syrians are still maintaining control, and that's very important that that happens because if the Iraqis shut down that border, the Kurdish they're already they already they're already a somewhat embargoed uh, region. That would just that would that would devastate them. They're they're playing a dangerous game. That's Rahava. Look it up. What's going on in Rahava? Fascinating story. They're the I would say of all the Kurds, they're the smartest ones so far. They stayed out of as many problems as they could. Even when the Iraqi Kurds decided prematurely to declare independence from Iraq. Uh, I mean, I know, I, I know in their heart of heart, the Syrian Kurds really wanted to put, you know, to support them, but they knew, no, no, we do this, uh-uh, we got a whole crap load coming down on us, and we but, know we don't have the resources to stop that. But so you they, do realize... They, they, they backed off. You do realize, in the 17, and I believe even in the 1600s, in the 16, 17, and 1800s, Serbs declared their independence from the Ottoman Empire, and the Ottoman Empire went in and crushed them. Bulgarians declared their independence from the Ottoman Empire, and the Ottoman Empire went in and crushed them. Uh, Greeks declared their independence from the Ottoman Empire, and the Ottoman Empire went in and crushed them. Egyptians, you go the down Czechs the line. Czechs declared their independence from the Russians in 1956, and the Russians right. crushed them. Right. So... Just because they were crushed doesn't mean squat. Just because it was premature. Yeah, in the short term. Yeah, yeah, I'm just talking short term. I'm talking where they're at right now. I'm not. But the Kurds. I haven't written this this, uh, Iraqi Kurds off at all. Yeah. The Kurds have announced their intentions. And they set up a satellite office in Russia. The Russians have now recognized the Kurds as a legitimate entity and are including them in international meetings. Yeah, Dude, it's on. A, this is a sticking point. These alliances aren't all clean. Uh, this is a sticking point with the Russians and the Turks. The, Tur the, the Russians, they want to negotiate a uh, peace with Assad that includes uh, the Syria, Rahava, maintaining its autonomy, being part of a Syria, but having autonomy, and the Turks don't want any kind of autonomy for the Kurds. So this is, this is a sticking point. But this is, is the thing about Turkey is because it, you know, if you really strip away all the alliances, uh, the, the 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 Turks are sitting in the middle of power that they can't handle by themselves, and so. They're in this awful position no matter where they go. They're going to have to make some tough compromises. And they don't seem like, well, their history seems to be a promise of compromise but not living up to the compromise. And I don't think that a lot of nations have a lot of patience for another Turkish uh, backstab, including the Russians. Yeah, including everybody. I mean... The Egyptians the can't stand them. The the Iranians find it their relationship with the Turks dubious. Um, and they and they're all along because of Russia. They're they're correct. going along with it, but it's not a rosy thing. It's not so, the, what's developing is that the Turks are the the perception of Turkey in the West has become similar to that of Pakistan. The only thing, the only saving grace that Turkey has is that it's still in NATO. And in time, that relationship will change. It has to. Either Turkey will change and become more NATO-like, more European-like, more contemporary, or NATO will change and ask them to leave. Let me cite an obscure 
development that happened in Turkey a couple of weeks ago. And I just, I, this popped up in an auto feed and I Googled it and I'm like, oh dear God, it's true. In Turkey today, it is legal to marry and impregnate a nine-year-old. Not cool, man. Not cool. So they're not moving forward and integrating with Europe. It, it's not just this law that goes away. It goes against everything that Western civilization stands for. It, it's it's the overall culture that has not changed fundamentally, and cannot change fundamentally, because of a lot of things. We don't need to go into all of that tonight. It'll bore most That's people. That's another show. Yeah, but. They're sliding backwards, and yet they've had this brief blip in history where their economy did well, and now they're the cock of the walk, and they expect that everyone's going to kowtow to them like they did when they were the shining star of NATO, when they were the, the oh, they were the bell of the ball. They couldn't do anything wrong. They were the wrong. shining example of what... A secular moderate, Muslim country could be. A moderate, secular Muslim country. And they were pumped up with all sorts of goodies from the United States and the West. Now that they've gotten cocky, a lot everyone's like, whoa, whoa, what are you what are you why are you threatening Israel? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Why are you threatening Cyprus? Whoa, whoa, why do you keep flying your airplanes over Greek airspace? Wait, what are you doing in northern Iraq? Wait, you you and put they a, just they just recently blocked Greek ships from accessing disputed islets, which are part of the Greek Isles, but Turks are saying that it's theirs. So that they have to, they have to because the way that the Turks negotiated the Lausanne Treaty keeps them out of the Aegean essentially, um, and. The European and, Union is happy to oblige that. And now the problem, though, is that there's golden Demdar hills. Correct. There's In the seas of Aegean, there'd be gold. Yeah, black gold. Black gold. Texas tea. Texas tea. <laughs> yeah. So, so between Israel and Greece, there are, and between Israel, Cyprus, Egypt and Greece, there are vast amounts of natural gas and oil in the ocean, in the Mediterranean. And big companies are there looking at it. And that's why the Saudis have gotten involved. And that's why the Saudis are becoming buddy-buddy with Israel and Cyprus and Greece and Egypt. Um, and there's an alliance forming there. Um, and the Turks don't like that. That's why they've <laughs> taken control of an island in the red in the red sea in the red sea and are working with dubai and are working dagger with dagger pointed right at saudi arabia just well saudi arabia and egypt ups. well also trade just in general oh, trade well yeah so these things are not going I, to i move. can't imagine what's going to happen to sudan now that it's made that move i mean you already have u.s troops like kind of playing in that area so I, I don't I don't know what's going to go with Sudan, but it, it's probably not going to be good. I'm just going to say that whoever's wh whatever the name of the dude is that's in charge of Sudan, he should have been looking at Muammar Gaddafi and saying, oh, that's that's not good. I, I see a popular uprising in Sudan soon. <laughs> for just, democracy. For democracy. Yeah, yeah. for democracy. Yeah. For democracy. So yeah, we're actually we're over time, by the way. Our show oh, who cares? Is over its time. Go get some coffee. Get some coffee. All right, I, let's get I, to the I, I state prepper thing real quick. You want to do the I prepper thing? There's okay. just one thing I want to share with people okay. about their home. All right, I'm I'm go gonna ahead. just I'm not gonna go to the second break because we don't have time, but I will do the I the I prepper bump. So be prepared for the I prepper bump. Be the power you hope to see, and that means being prepared to provide, as much as possible, yourself and your loved ones with basic necessities. Welcome to iPrepper. Get ready to be prepared. There. We're back. This is iPrepper. 
So this is the ad prepper segment of the show, and you have some stuff to say. I'll let you say your stuff, and then that'll be the eye prepper segment. Go ahead. A man's home is his castle, correct? That, that is correct. It, what is that founded in? That would be kind of, I would say, Germanic tradition, English law, yeah. English common I, law. I would say it's English common law. I mean, it may very well go back before it does. English it common goes law. Back Germanic tradition, then comes English common law. Yeah. So, so if a man's home is his castle, why are our castles built out of sticks and paper? It's a metaphor. Yeah, and why do our doors all open in? You know, that is a good question. Why would you, you wouldn't want your door to open in in a castle. No. Correct. It's not good. Right, because it's if I'm going to reach. to push a door in if it doesn't open in. Correct. So, as a prepper, I am looking at my environment and thinking about ways that would slow access to my home. Whether it's a nefarious state or if the, or if the zombies or, show up, the recipients the zombies, show up, yeah, or if it's a home invasion, um, it is far more convenient to have a door open in if you have groceries in your hand and if that's your uh, objective. But it is impossible to kick a door in that closes from the outside in. It just won't go when you're kicking it against the wall of the house. Now, if you have a bolt that's holding it shut and the door opens in, it's pretty easy to bust out the jam and push that door open in the middle of the night before you can get prepared for an onslaught or a situation where there's a bunch of people outside and you can be inside protecting your home. Do you follow me? Yeah. So I'm why do so far? So why do building associations categorically say, oh no, the, the door should they should open in? Is it to give why? easier access to the home? What's the reason that they give? They don't. And I checked with a building code uh, inspector in the state that I live in, I'm like, are there laws that govern which way the doors to your home open out or in? He goes, no, you can have it either way. And I said, so why do all the homes doors open in? He goes, I don't know. No idea. And you think about it, even in terms of security, when the door opens in, that means you have to account for the space for that door coming in. Correct. If it opens out, that's like, they don't have to worry about that. Right. Now, the you one issue like, you have... You think, of, think about this, even, even when it snows in and the snow is deep, it's easier to push a door open, you know, and you kind of push the dirt on the, you know, the snow aside. Or maybe if you open it and then you... Never mind. That's probably a disadvantage. I'm going to say that's a disadvantage. If you get a lot of snow piled up in front of your house if you have to open your door outward that's a disadvantage and how often does that happen at least at least once every two years three years yeah that's important yeah well yeah yeah so when you start thinking about your home let's say you're getting ready to build a home start doing some research Start questioning the assumptions about how your house is built and why it's built that way. It may have been at one point simple economics. Maybe it's cheaper to design a door that opens in. Maybe it's easier. Maybe the wind doesn't catch the door and flop it around and break it. Maybe it's just something that benign. Or maybe you're just giving nefarious institutions more easy access to you in the middle of the night 
just something to think about. Yep. And now I have a, uh, I created a little, uh, I guess I'll call it like a little article blurb report thing. It's just two, two little blurbs here from, both of them happen to be from, oh no, I'm in the wrong place. Where is it? Come on. Where is, where is this thing? Everyday prep with your vehicle and your home. So what we have here is these are both from where is it ask a prepper ask a prepper is the site so there are 10 vehicles that you would want to consider by and it gives examples of some of the best homes for defended prepper homes you might want to look at this then mm. uh, but like for instance I, I included the one example here is is the dome design and, uh, but I mean, you could look at these home designs and you don't necessarily have to go all, you know, whole hog like them, but it might give you some ideas, ways that maybe you can improve your home and it's basic home defense. Or if you are by building a home, maybe, maybe think about some of these designs, like from the start. I know I have a dream I'm working towards, and that is one day I want a homestead. I want a homestead and. I want to build a home from scratch and uh, yeah, things like this will matter to me. And I, I want my home to be self-sustaining, self-reliant and not self-sustaining in the global globalist kind of sense of the term, like, like small scale individualistic self-sustainability, not large scale sustainability, which is just code for this is how we justify controlling everybody's lives. So you know, that's not sustainability. I did a calculation tonight. Um, I, I got a gas generator, a, a substantial one, a big one. And I can run it for eight hours on about uh, $14 in gas. Eight hours for $14, which means what I pay for electric and utilities is about three to four hundred bucks a month. I can run a gas generator with the price of gas being what it is today and run my household for a good eight hours a day with electricity and come off the grid. It's that simple. Question is, what are the ramifications of doing that? Is the city going to look at my house and say, hey, you're not using electricity? Um, we have a problem here. Because other people have had problems with the municipality coming out and saying, no, 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 you have to have electricity in your house. No, you can't provide your own electricity. That's against well, the law. Story we covered in Florida about how right. there are so many homes that you are not allowed to be off the grid and you must be reliant on the grid. And so there's a lot of homes down there that had to go through a process to try to figure out how to how to use their their backup power, their solar power and whatever else they had, because they had to utilize the grid and be on the grid. So when the grid goes down, they go down. And it's like it's an insane law meant to protect the Florida power companies down there to assure that they get customers. And maybe something beyond that as well. The 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 the, the two things that the government does not want is someone who is self-reliant doesn't rely on the coercive enterprise products and services and anonymity <laughs> those two things oh the no government will do anything to stop they do not I'll want self-reliant people that are able to do things that they can't track they don't want that and they want to know who you are. And and that, by the oh. way, is what you want to work towards if you want to build your own individual power and free association power, which is that's like the underlying goal of everything that I do and I state is to enable myself to do that and, and hopefully encourage and help others to do the same. I think I think that I think I think we got that covered. I think we're done. So we got your eye prepper in after all. What do you think of that? 
I'm very happy. I'm, I'm very not happy. saying for sure what we're going to do next week for iWorld, but we may not be done with an examination of what's going on in the Middle East because in a lot of ways we kind of only scratch the surface on that. But we'll, we will be back next week, next Monday, right here on the Liberty Principle Facebook page. Same bat time, same bat channel, Monday 9p, 9.30ish. Sometimes it might be a little early today. We actually started a little early, but it won't be later <coughs> than 9.30. So I'll say between 9 and 9.30. I just listed as 9.30. And There's... tomorrow I'll be back with uh, headlines you may have missed on, a, on the iState Facebook page and then back on the Liberty Principle page with Bodie Agora, we'll be doing Is Daily Tuesday for the first time since before the Christmas break. Do you get any just, last remarks? Yes, we forgot to mention Jerusalem. and Oh, that's and that, a big that's one. A, yeah. that's a huge one we missed. But, but there's, there's so much going on on a weekly basis. When you said, we'll be back next week and we'll probably be talking about this a little bit more. It, there's so much stuff That's developing. That's probably. You never know. Yeah, on a weekly basis, there's so much popping up that Insane. it it's almost overwhelming to stay on top of what is going on around the world right now. Uh, it used to be so easy to just say, "Oh, it's the Cold War. You're either pro NATO or pro Iron." Pretty Cook. simple. Yeah. Hey, it, the world is a simple and easy place to navigate. It, it's it's red, it's red and yellow, and red, white, and blue. That's pretty correct. Easy. <laughs> correct. So you know, it's different. Very. But different. I tell you what, you should do. What you should do, and I don't know if you're doing this. You should be. You should be going to iState.tv every day, and you'll see a whole bunch of new articles every day. And Basically, I scour the interwebs. I go through 2,000-plus stories. And what I'm looking for, this isn't the place to go to get all the top headlines of what everybody else is talking about. Sometimes I cover some of that stuff. But this is a place to go where you get a little awareness. You get, you get, to, you get to see what, what, what your government in action is really like, what coercive enterprising is really like. You get a little hope. I cover all kinds of stuff that show... All kinds of, there's so many incredible, promising things happening right now that's being buried by the negativity you're seeing around you. And then action. I can, I'll, I'll show you how some people are doing things and, and how you might, like even this segment here, this is an action part. This is something that you can do right now to increase your own personal power and free association power. So go to iState.tv and don't get overwhelmed by all the fear porn. See? What? Is fear porn like gun porn? No, gun porn's cool. Fear porn, not so much. Oh. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not saying you don't need to be aware of what's going on, but if that's all, if you're just covered in the muck, then you're you're going to have a pretty bleak outlook on the world, and you're you're what defeated. About, that's what just about, where they want you. What about anger porn? Anger porn, that's kind of related. Fear porn and anger porn, yeah. they go hand in hand. They're they're like brother and sister or brother and brother or sister and sister. I don't know. They're related and they walk together a lot. So on that note, I think we'll we'll punch this puppy in the head. We'll say this is this is a done show. What do you think of that? Do you think of this being a done show? Are you for that?